last presenter, so other than Dr. Amy Lynn A. Barrion Lupo, she is a professor 12 in the College of Arts and Sciences, Institute of Biological Sciences, Environmental Biolog Biology Division, and she is also the curator for geometric moths and spiders at the U UPLB Museum of Natural History. Her presentation is entitled Philippine Biodiversity Plus One, a new species and new country record for the genus Pomacia, order Geometridae family Larentine. Uh, a brief background of Dr. Amy. Um, she, is, she is also serving as the current faculty regent of the UP system, and she is also a UP scientist three here in the IBS College of Arts and Sciences, UPLB. Mom Amy is a staunch advocate for the promotion of arthropod biodiversity and taxonomy. Her passion for cultivating interest in the uncharismatic species by changing public perception through responsible science communication has led to collaboration and with spider experts worldwide to evaluate the quality of information leading to misinformation and fear about spiders. She has described more than 52 species of spiders and 22 species of rice bugs. Uh, I think this is a pre-recorded uh, presentation of Dr. Amy Lee, and here it is. Magandang umaga po. So on the 46th year of the UPLB Museum of Natural History, and in alignment with its theme, which is continuing excellence through adversity, creating partnerships, fruitful research, and digitized collections, I'm happy to present to you our recent discovery uh, an addition to Philippine biodiversity. Let me first share my screen. So I'm here to present to you this morning, Philippine biodiversity plus one, a new species and a new country record for the genus Pomasha. This is from the family Geometridae, subfamily Larentini. I am Aimeline Dupo from the Institute of Biological Sciences and a curator for moths and spiders of the UPLB Museum of Natural History. So I'm thankful for the creation of this logo for the 46th anniversary because it depicts the very organism that I'm going to introduce to you this morning. So the green arrow points to it and I added a heart to mark it. And this is my co-author, Claude Totel, from the um, National Museum of Natural History in France. So he is an architect by trade, but he's a very passionate entomologist. So he, he devotes a lot of his time observing and collecting moths. And he has developed an interest in working on Philippine moths, particularly the family Geometry D. So I'll show you a picture of the moths he has uh, collected from the Philippines and donated with the UPLB Museum of Natural History. So this is the close-up of the spin specimens. So notice that the geometry moths, or the moths in particular, aren't really just drab brown. There are moths that are uh, bluish gray. You can even find speckled moths, striped moths, moths with uh, patterns that look like lichen. And our partnership was uh, formalized through a memorandum of understanding last 2016. So I think that was uh, more than five years, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So around seven years of working together and this was signed then by the director of the museum, Dr. Juan Carlos T. Gonzalez. And Michelle is at the background because she is our uh, linkages officer at that time. But what are these moths anyway? Ano ba yung pamilyang geometry din sinasabi natin? So I'll show you a short clip of a caterpillar. So this particular caterpillar is from the family geometry beam. Notice how it moves. Its gait seems like it's dragging the rest of its body. 
from the forward, moving forward, and then pulling its body behind. So it looks like it's measuring something. So the family geometry are commonly known as earth measurers. So when we say earth measurers, it's because of this particular gait or this particular movement. It seems like they are measuring the earth when they move about. So sa Tagalog, tinatawag natin itong mangdadangkal kasi para niyang didadangkal ang lugar na kanyang nilalakaran. But what if you're not able to see the immature forms and you're only encountering the adult forms of this family? How do we recognize them? Let me share with you some spot ID characteristics. So when we're looking at geometry D, the first thing that you would have to look at would be wing pattern. That's That would be the most uh, visible part of the moth. So they have streaks or what we term as striations or lines. And these lines are extending from the far wing down to the hind wing. So it's continuous. The pattern of these lines or streaks are continuous. Next, we move on to the antennae. So on the head of the insect, you have sensory organs called the antennae. So the antennae of members of geometry D are either simple or what we term as filiform, or they may look like combs or yung supply na tinatawag natin. So uh, using entomological terms, when we say that the antennae are comb-like, it means that it is pectinate. So these are easier uh, characteristics to observe. What's trickier to observe but very important if you wish to recognize the family immediately would be looking at the wing venations. So if you look at the four wings, the four wing cubitus appears to be three prong. So sumasa nga siya. So parang may tatlong sanga for the cubitus. So the three um, yellow yellow-orange arrows are pointing to this part that I'm referring to. And another more important part that you, would, you need to observe for when you're looking at this particular family would be the subcosta. The subcosta bends uh, sharply at the base. It's very distinct for all the members of geometry D. Yun nga lang, this particular part and even most of the venation of this insect are covered with scales. And if you're looking at the subcosta, you would need to really uh, mount the specimens first, spread the wings in order for you to determine the venation. That's why it takes a lot of patience and uh, photo identification of geometry D would not be possible unless you're just looking at the common species or you have good familiarity for members of this family. But if you are new to this but wish to work on this, that means you have to pin the insect first, spread the wings, and observe the wing venation. And for this particular family, itong family Larentini, again, we go back to the subcosta and look at how it is fusing with the radius and the radius sector. The radius sector is what we term as RS. So notice that if it's fusing, the subcosta, the radius one, and the radius sector are fusing together at a particular length in the hind wing. So that would be part of the back of the wing or the second pair of wings. That means you're looking at the subfamily Larentini. So notice that the more important characters are not that easy to spot ID. It needs a lot of observation. Another feature that you need to observe for would be that members of this family have tympanal organs or tympanum. These are hearing organs. Kung baga sa tao, ito ay tinatawag nating tenga. Their hearing apparatus or hearing organs are located at the first abdominal segment. This is very important because other families of moths have tympanal organs at the thorax. But for this family, the tympanal organs or the hearing organs are, are at the first abdominal segment. And these hearing organs are very important for this moth to perceive 
the arrival of predators like insectivorous bats and also to escape them because they have a means of escaping these bats through their tympanal organs. They could hear them before they even approach and can even cancel the echolocating features of these insectivorous bats. They are very important to tympanal organs. Unfortunately, there are very limited studies on moth diversity in the country, particularly for the earth measurers or our geometry D. Bakit? Let me enumerate some of the reasons. For one, geometry D are not considered to be pests in agroecosystems. They are not our competitors for food. Uh, rarely do you find them eating the food that humans eat. That's why we never get to notice them. And they're very well camouflaged. They're very hard to spot. Uh, notice earlier we have uh, striations. Sometimes their striations are similar to the bark of trees, uh, to rocks, to lichen. So you don't really get to notice them unless they move. And compared to butterflies, moths are less charismatic because they're not as colorful. And they only occur, uh, most of them occur at night. So you don't really get to see them. When, they are, uh, when we are asleep, that's the time they go out. And there are also a few local specialists. So that's a big contributing factor to low biodiversity reports on this particular family or moths in general. Again, one reason is that they're not really interesting unless someone introduces introduce the group to you. They're hard, hard to spot and they're not test. So there are very uh, few reasons why we take notice of them. But we should really take notice. Why? Because the species are forest dwellers. They're as much prone to environmental perturbations like climate change, habitat fragmentation, so they're good indicator species for disturbances. Um, while we do not get to observe this as much, they provide important ecosystem services as food for bats and birds. They're also considered to be pollinators of uh, forest species. And uh, if you look at it, uh, at the point of view of pests in the future, because humans are encroaching on forest ecosystems more and more to adjust to the increasing needs for food, these particular species may pose as, as secondary pests in the future. Why? Because uh, most geometry have a wide range of food sources. So they could feed on a variety of plants. So they very well may be pests in the future. And when we are working on biodiversity, we cannot attempt to protect anything within our backyard if we do not know what's in it. So again, we cannot protect the unknown. The Rintini, or this particular subfamily of Geometridae, was thought to occur in temperate or high elevations only. So that's why when we focus our attention to the least known taxa, we get to reveal new information or new insights about our country. So the Philippines is a tropical country. And we expected very low numbers of Larintini to be observed here. That's why we do not get to record Larintini that much. We do not look for Larintini because in the past, it was reported that this particular subfamily occurs in temperate regions only, or if it's in the tropics, it would be in high elevations. So imagine our surprise that this river, so Cantigas River is in Romblon. So if you're going to Romblon, uh, you ride the ferry from Batangas Port to Romblon Port, that is nine hours. And an additional two hours, you will reach uh, Sibuyan. Sibuyan is the area where Antigas River is found. 
and the Mount Giti Keating is located. So Cantigas River is around uh, 30 meters above sea level only, but it's right beside a tall mountain or an elevation with an elevation of 2,058 meters above sea level. So we we believe that the moth is occupying high elevation, but it goes down to lower elevations also because it's just adjacent to Mount Keating Giting. Uh, Pomasha conceptioni, or this particular new species, is the 17th species of the genus Pomasha. It is a first for the Philippines. Uh, members of the genus Pomasha have been reported in Borneo. So when Holloway reported this particular genus to occur in Borneo, it was expected that a member of this species can be found in Palawan because it's the closest to Borneo. But so far, there haven't been any reports of Larentiini in Palawan. But for Sibuyan Romblon, we have one record. So this is the first record, the first country record for the genus Pomasha. And it's also a first for our University of the Philippines president, Danilo Concepcion. So he's the 21st president of the University of the Philippines. And we decided to name this particular new species after uh, President Concepcion because of his support to basic sciences, particularly research in Sibuyan Romblon. And even on its 46th year, the Museum of Natural History continues to make many firsts. And this particular species, Pomasha Concepcion, is but one of the many discoveries you're going to hear for this morning. I think this is my last slide. So let me take this opportunity to thank you. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. All right, thank you very much. Uh... Ma'am Amy, and to award your Certificate of Appreciation, uh, the University of the Philippines Los Baños, the UTLB Museum Natural of History, awards a Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Amy Lynn Marion Dupo for serving as resource person during the UTLB Museum of Natural History Special Webinar on Research and Collection, given this 29th day of September 2022 during the museum's 46th anniversary celebration with the theme, Continuing Excellence Through Adversity, Creating Partnerships, Fruitful Research, and Digitized Collections. Signed, Marian P. De Leon, Director of UPLB Museum of Natural History.